Hello there, Pisces. Welcome to your April. Um, he's definitely wearing some type of a Roman outfit from what it looks like to me. He lives on the other side of the water. Okay, so he has to like, um, he has a long ways to traverse over water, over the, the ocean in order to get home. He chartered a boat and he's still wearing his armor and his, uh, his war gear. And he's just like, okay, the battle is already done. I'm, I'm a winner. I, I'm just trying to get home right now. And he's still fairly young, I would say, you know, under the age of 30. And he's just trying to get home. He chartered a boat. He rented out this boat or bought the boat or whatever. And he's by himself on this voyage. So he's just trying to get home. Along the way, he's like steering his boat. He, he hits like a swarm of mermaids, okay? And they're tossing their seashells onto his boat as a gift, as like a parting gift. He waves goodbye to them and he's like, oh, if I were to tell the people back home that I saw a flock of mermaids, they're not going to believe me. And then the next day he continues on his journey and he sees the sunrise and it's like this giant, so he must be close to the equator. It's like this giant ball of fire in the sky. And he's all like, oh, if I tell the people back home that I saw this giant ball of fire, uh, coming through the horizon, you know, they're not going to believe me. And then um, the next day he made, you know, a little bit more progress along the way. And then he sees like a two-headed bird flying above him. It looks almost like um, a pterodactyl. That's what it looks like, but it has two heads. And it's like spitting out fire. And he's like, well, if I tell the people back home, they're not going to believe me. And so he sees all of these amazing things on his voyage. And he's just like, I wish they could see it because if they see it, they would believe me. So if I were to tell my story, when I get home, no one's going to believe me. He finally makes it home and he gets like a really warm warrior's welcome. And um, he sits down at the dinner table and they're like, tell us, what did you see? What did you see? And so, you know, the people that are sitting around him, he... It's like a, 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 a lot of different types of people. Some of them work for him. Some of them are his family members. So I see like an older pudgy lady, uh, an older skinny man. So I feel like they're a couple, possibly his parents. And I see a bunch of little kids sitting on the far end of the table. And then his siblings, you know, around his age, they're like, tell us what you saw. Tell us what you saw. So he proceeds to tell them everything that he saw, the mermaid, the two-headed uh, bird, the uh, sun in the sky as well as other things and like the adults were just like okay it's time for bed like they're not very impressed by the stories that he's telling them but the children on the far end of the table are just like tell us more tell us more okay so that's where the the scene kind of cuts out and so uh, when I saw this I was just um, thinking about how a lot of you Pisces, you've been through a lot in your life, okay? You've experienced almost like 10 lifetimes, okay? 10 lifetimes. You've experienced what is equivalent to what somebody would have experienced in 10 lifetimes. And I feel like it really aged you. It really matured you. It made you uh, a really strong person. And I feel like, in a way, some of you are looking back on your past experiences and you're just like, I've seen a lot of things in my lifetime. I've put up with a lot of things. And I never, um, I want to say, like, it, whatever, like, didn't break me made me stronger. It made me, you know, a lot more resilient. It made me a lot more sure. It, it, um, it, it almost like solidify your resolve, your will to live, your will to, you know, live another day, see another day. And there's at the same time, this sense of homecoming, this sense of like, how the, the realization of how important family is to you. And even if your family are not impressed by the choices that you've made, or by the, the journey that you chose to take as an individual, at the end of the day, your family members are always, you know, um, there at the end of your voyage, okay? So family, I feel, means a lot to you. Even if you don't agree with each other, even if they don't agree with the choices that you make, there's always this sense of like, 
they're they're always open armed when they see you. They always bring you into the fold. They always make sure that you're all right. Okay. So I feel like there's a lot that you might have. I'm almost seeing like um, a situation where you want to explain to them, you want to tell them, this is why I did what I did, okay? Um, but I feel like, you know, they're, they might be a lot more pragmatic. They're in the, 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 the living, you know? They might not believe in your fantastical stories. They might not believe in magic. They might not believe that uh, what you're telling them is the truth. There's a sense of elusiveness, okay? And I feel like what you're telling them is your version of the truth, but for whatever reason, they might have difficulties believing your version of the truth. At the same time, I feel like there's a sense of mysticism and magic about the way in which you look at your life, the, the, the experiences that has really shaped you. Despite all the ups and downs, you still believe in fairy tales, you still believe in magic, and you still believe that there are uh, a lot of like unknown and unresolved mysteries in the world. So we should not close off our sense of magic in order to get through life in a more practical or pragmatic way, okay? So I feel like you might be straddling the fence here, I'm sensing, with when it comes to like realism versus mystery. So it, it's almost like you might not be made for the typical nine to five work environment. You might want something more. You might be yearning for that great adventure, that big escape, or you know, the, the tropical paradise where the sun is like a ball of fire in the sky. Okay, you might be yearning for that sense of uh, adventure, that's that travel lust, that travel bug. You might be wanting to recapture and to relive an experience, and you're trying to find either a partner in crime or somebody that believes in what you saw, believes in your story, so that they can embark on this voyage with you. And so, you know, the children sitting at the far end of the table, they keep telling this man, tell us more, tell us more. I feel like if in the past you've been dealing with people or situations, people who are a little bit more like, you know, pragmatic and they don't really entertain tall tales, right? Or they're just like stick, stick in the mud and they want to pop your bubble. Okay, I feel like you're finding the right audience. You're finding starry-eyed adventurers who are really inspired by the stories that you tell them. You're able to find your community and your clan coming through in the month of April. And so it looks really, really good where you have this sense of homecoming. Finally, I found my community. Finally, I'm finding people that are like me, that want to explore and they see and still believe in the magic in the world. And things like that and then a part of you I, I do see this major wonder lust energy wanting a, a more exciting or a more exotic life feeling a little bit stale and a little bit like way down by responsibilities and wanting to kind of like lighten your load to to move forward to to uh, travel to kind of like connect with foreign people foreign lands okay so I feel like you're you're, you're nesting instincts you're not domesticated, okay? Your your energy is definitely not domesticated. You don't want to be domestic, domesticated. You don't want a life that is predictable. You don't care about that financial security anymore, which is good because it seems to me like you've made it. You know, when you're um, you're not concerned about survival, when you're not concerned too much about how to pay the bills, and it, it seems to me like you've already had. Sorry. I have to retrieve this from the floor. When you've already had um, enough financial blessings and financial abundance where you don't have to worry, you're in a good space now to you know, enjoy your leisure time and to really think about what really drives you, what, is, what makes you feel passion um, and, and passionate again, and where it is and what it is that you want to be, where you want to live, and you're planning the next stage of your adventure. We have some really beautiful things. Okay. So, <clears throat> you have some really beautiful cards, okay? But um, I think I'm going to pull out 
me see three more. So death, you have death, which is new, like the ending, ending of the old and a new beginning coming through. So death and then immediately after that judgment. So that's like new things coming through as a, re as, as a result of letting go of something. What is this something that we are talking about here? What is this something that you're showing me? Can you give me three cards, please, for the Pisces people? Okay, so this is the card about success, okay? It's next to the Queen of Pentacles, so this is worldly success, having a lot of financial abundance, like I mentioned. Um, some of you might be getting a promotion. Some of you are getting a major step up in your career. Some of you might get a like a big pay increase. But either way, your financial situation is, is golden. It looks really, really positive. And you're also re-examining the work that you're doing. And I feel like, yes, on the one hand, it is very stable. It um, brings home and generates a lot of money for you. But with this Four of Cups, it's like, I want a little bit more. I want that fantastical job. I want that magic and the, 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 the passion. And I want to feel alive with the work that I do. So some of you are at a point where you're just like, yes, this job is great, but now I'm looking for something new. So I feel like this um, new energy with the death card and the judgment card is all about seeking something new, seeking something that is a lot more in alignment with the things that you believe in, which is the, um, the, the exciting journey, um, starting a new blank page, being able to travel, being able to move, having more flexibility, and especially being in a little bit more of a warmer, more tropical environment. So I feel like for many of you, um, it has snowed too long where you are is what I'm sensing. So I don't know if you're living in an environment where it's a little bit um, sparsely populated and it's really hard to find a community of people or you're in an environment where it's like cold year round and you're looking for more sunshine. So that, that, that um, ball of fire, that sun in the sky that looks like a ball of fire, it indicates to me a more tropical environment and I feel like you're looking for sunlight or you, you might, for some of you, have seasonal depression. And so it would behoove you to move to a more warmer climate, okay, just for your emotional health. Of course, we all don't have the luxury to just be able to pick up and go, but I feel like you're starting to realize it. Some of you might be uh, aging and you're just like, I, I can't stand this cold anymore. So I need to, you know, get myself to a better place or to uh, find something else. So was, I, I feel like there's a need here, movement in the southern direction. So this is travel. This is swift travel and swift movement and swift communication and relocation and especially moving into the um, southeast direction. I feel like that's what's in store for you guys. So you might be contemplating about new jobs that are coming through in the picture. There might be a new job on the offing for you that might require a total relocation. And it looks really, really beautiful because what's coming through is... The King of Pentacles, which is new promotion, new work. The Hierophant, working in a very strong, excuse me, working in a very stable, a very um, institutionalized type of an environment. This is a job that I, I usually call it like um, not so much working for a, a nonprofit or a private enterprise, but more for the public sector, okay? Dealing with institutions, dealing with like top-down type of management, which is not all bad. It sounds boring, but it's not all that bad. Um, and it's so stable, and it's been around for a really long time, so you have a little bit of job security. But then on top of that, it pays really well. Okay, so you can escalate, and you can, uh, you know, get constant promotion. You can climb that corporate ladder. And the work environment itself, I feel like it's really right up your alley. So some of you might be solicited for a job. Some of you might be solicited to run a company or an organization. Some of you might be thrust into really strong, intense leadership positions. And you have all of these ideas that you have collected from all the other places that you have worked to really make some major powerful changes in this kind of stale and stagnant environment. 
And at first, people might not be receptive, but I feel like over time, they're going to start to see the merits in it. They're going to believe in the things that you're trying to uh, bring forth into the world. And they're going to, I, I feel like, internalize your vision. And so you might have been like the visionary ahead of your time, and you might have wanted to implement a lot of changes. There were blockages. There were people that are like naysayers, or there were people that were just like, that's too much too soon because I feel like, you know, you have a lot of ideas that you're throwing out there. And this person is like, no, 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 slow it down. And so the environment that you're in, especially if it's a new work environment, people are a little bit more inspired, a little bit more willing to experiment and a lot more receptive to the sense of magic that you're trying to work, bring into the new environment. So I feel like if you are contemplating, should I stay here? I've got house, a house here. I've got friends here. I've got a lot of assets. I've got like, you know, a good social network. And should I leave all of this and transition with the death card and the judgment card into a new work environment? Is that going to bode well for me? Is that a practical choice? And I feel like you definitely should implement this move because it's going to bring in like a breath of fresh air that is very much welcome in your life, okay? So that's the first thing that I'm seeing. Let me talk about all the, the other marginal things. What we have here is the world. I can't pick up the card. And uh, this is the closing of a cycle, okay? And realizing that a cycle is closing, realizing that the whole world is out there waiting for us. There's a lot of opportunities. There's a lot of like different areas that we want to explore. There's a sense of, uh, I feel like there's a sense of like longing for the exotic, wanting something that is different for many of you. And so I feel like this is a card about yearning. She's almost like looking through that uh, door that is left ajar and wondering what her life would have would be like if she were on the other side okay so it's almost like acknowledging that yes what I have here is okay it's very very stable ten of pentacles things that are built up over time okay so I feel like for many of you this is a work situation where things are really really stable I can keep going I can keep advancing I'm gonna get a pay increase every year I can get promoted I already know what I'm doing I'm in a really powerful position where I can be groomed for a leadership position but it's a little bit stale and stagnant and I feel like in the past you might have convinced yourself this is where I could you know start a, a life but then over time you know possibly within the past three years two years even it has proven to be a little bit like too rigid too structured too predictable and it's no longer your cup of tea and so you're thinking about other options okay for others of you you have a really strong soulmate connection here and we have here the two of cups and the ten of pentacles I feel for some of you you're shifting into a relationship where you know a lot of the time I, I don't know what it's like to be married uh, and you know to to be married to somebody for like five years or ten years but I feel like there is a relationship regardless of how long the two of you have been together there is definitely somebody that you're living with there's shared assets shared uh, bank account housing situation grocery bills possibly children possibly you know like both names are on the car both people's names are on the house so there's there's like a lot of financial entanglements between you and another person and I feel like you're sensing that the love is no longer there the love has transformed and it ha has become very quiet it's no longer passionate it's a, a very safe, stable, quiet type of a love that might have started out very passionately, but now it's more friendship-based. And strangely, I feel like Cancer, uh, I'm sorry, Pisces, what it is that you want, what it is that really stirs your passion. I want to be in the tropics. I want to interact with different people from a different culture. I want to be able to, you know, uh, walk around at night without feeling cold. I want to be able to, you know, it's, 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 it's like just telling them what it is that really stirs you. And I feel like 
when you approach these people from that angle, it's going to really hype them up. It's going to make them want to bring these things for you or create these things for you or to go out into the world and find these things to give to you. So I'm sensing that many of you are looking for a change. You've realized that where you are professionally, it's stable. It, it, it can keep growing, but you're not really happy there because emotionally you yearn for more and you yearn for more excitement and more adventure. And if it's the, the spirit of adventure that you're looking for, I feel like somebody is putting like a, a damper on your plans, but I feel like you can convince them, okay? They're just afraid of change and they're just afraid that this is something that is um, fickle. They're, they might think that you're fickle, like you might want this now, but three months from now you might not want it and you might regret the decision. So I feel like they're not really understanding what it is that you innately need and want. And so you kind of need to uh, walk them through the process. Okay. Um, I'm, I'm sensing like an age gap, a cultural divide between two people as well. The world card usually indicates like dealing with foreigners. So you might be dealing with someone who might have different values, who might be culturally very different from you. And so you're seeing the same situation, but through a different lens. And so approaching them from a different perspective, I feel is a lot more, it's going to yield a better result. Okay. Some of you could be dealing with a lot of different people in your work environment from different backgrounds as well. So work ethics, um, might be different, okay? The things that we value as, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking here from an American, like, uh, very stubborn. I feel like you're dealing with someone who's a little bit cold, pragmatic, practical, a little bit calculating, but very warm and, you know, just like s someone who's a, a really good match for you. There's a lot of love. There's a lot of mutual understanding. This person is choosing to be stubborn. And I feel like there is going to be a communication breakthrough. The judgment card is greatly about that. Um, somebody, you know, honking the horn or blowing the horn, which basically means communication is coming into the picture. It's going to work itself out. So I don't want you to worry over it. It just takes a little bit more time. And it just takes you being able to express yourself in a way that will allow them to kind of like learn to put themselves in your shoes to understand where you're coming from. Okay. I will leave it at that, uh, Pisces. I do wish you the best. And uh, for those who are looking for a reader, I do have a link in the description box below for a psychic base out of California. Her name is Bridget. She is phenomenal. I've been putting in a plug for her because I really, really value her insights. And she's phenomenal. She's um, she's gifted. So if you'd like to book a reading, I highly recommend her. Um, I'll, I will be back in about two weeks' time for your mid-month reading. Take care of yourself, and I wish you the best.